Welcome to the Public Corporation Registration part of the new lobbying application launch. This video series is designed to help you in understanding the new lobbying application. In the previous video, we went over how to file the 2019-2020 Lobbyist Statement of Registration, including how to file an amendment. In this video, we will be going through how to file the 2019-2020 Public Corporation Statement of Registration, what new rules apply to filing submissions, and how to navigate through each tab on the filing. Please keep in mind that all filings for year 2018 and prior will be submitted in our current lobbying application. Beginning on January 1, 2019, any future filings will be submitted in our new lobbying application. The 2019-2020 Public Corporation Statement of Registration can begin to be filed as of December 17, 2018. Please note, filings filed in our current application will eventually be migrated over to the new lobbying application. We do not yet have a date of when the migration will occur. The lobbying application is launching in beta, which means it's still under construction. Not all functions will be immediately available. Screen views and features are subject to change. In this video, I will explain how to file the 2019-2020 Public Corporation Statement of Registration, know what new rules apply to filing submissions, and how to navigate through each tab on the filing. You can log into the lobbying application through a direct link on JCOPE's website or through the my.ny.gov website with your personal ny.gov ID. Please see our previous video series for instructions on obtaining a ny.gov ID and setting up your user profile in the lobbying application. Lobbyists who have previously completed the Ethics for Lobbyists course already have an ny.gov ID assigned to them. Once on your dashboard screen in your user profile, you will want to make sure all the organizations you are affiliated with, submit filings for, are listed under the Affiliated Organization tab. If any changes need to be made to the profile for individual lobbyist names added, you can access the organization profile by selecting View next to the organization name. If there is more than one organization name listed and you would like to see a particular organization's submitted filings in the dashboard, you can select the radio button next to the organization name. To begin a public corporation statement of registration filing, you will need to select registration under lobbyist filings in the quick start menu. Under Lobbyist Public Corporation Name inf Information, you will select the Public Corporation Name in the drop-down menu. We are going to complete a Public Corporation Statement of Registration. If the Public Corporation Name does not appear here, this means either the Public Corporation Profile that you are filing for has not been claimed or created, or that your name has not been added to the profile as either the Chief Administrative Officer, Delegated Administrator, or Authorized Preparer. Please reference these two video tutorials on JCOPE's website, Understanding Roles in the Organization Profile and How to Create or Claim an Organization Profile for guidance. And if at that point you still need guidance, please contact a JCOPE Filing Specialist at 1-800-87-ETHICS. However, if the public corporation name does appear in the drop-down menu, you will need to select the name as I just did. Then, in the screen below, will appear the biennial period for you to choose from. To begin the registration, you would select Start in blue under Start slash View Form for the correct biennial period. The registration filing will now appear in your browser. At the top is one square box where the public corporation name appears. 
You can edit a profile when your name is listed on an organization profile as either the Chief Administrative Officer, Delegated Administrator, or Authorized Preparer by selecting the pencil icon. Then, to the right of this information, the filing will display Public Corporation Registration Biennial Period 2019-2020 and indicate that it is a new filing. The reference number will be the individual number given to a saved filing until it is submitted. However, when you begin a filing, it will appear a zero in that field until the filing is either saved or submitted. After the filing has been submitted, it will be given a confirmation number that will begin with PRO. If you call the Help Desk for assistance, the temporary reference number is used to help JCO find a filing that was begun but not submitted. The confirmation number will help JCO locate a submitted filing. The buttons to Submit, Discard, and Save will always remain at the top of the tab list in the filing. Within your Public Corporation Statement of Registration are tabs. We will go through each tab individually to show you what information is stored in each tab. There may be some information that is not applicable. In other words, you may not need to complete every tab within the filing. However, there is information that is required to be completed, which we will go over as well. Please keep in mind that while completing each tab within the registration filing, you can continue through each tab by either selecting the tab to access or by selecting continue at the bottom of each tab. Also, if the, if the registration needs to be saved, you can do so by selecting the Save button located at the top of the tabs. If you accidentally start a registration and do not wish to complete, you can select Discard, which is also located at the top of the tabs. The application always displays the message asking if you wish to save before returning to the dashboard if the filing has not yet been submitted. The Agreement Information tab. This tab is required to be completed. For type of lobbying relationship, the application pre-fills the box to say public corporation. For level of government lobbied, you will need to select from the drop-down either state lobbying, municipal lobbying, or state and municipal lobbying. Next, you must upload and attach a scanned copy of your lobbying agreement. The lobbying agreement form can be uploaded here. To upload the lobbying agreement, select Add Lobbying Agreement. Then a separate screen will appear and will need to be completed. The contract written authorization or lobbying agreement form can be uploaded under the Contract Supporting Documentation section by selecting the Upload icon. You will want to have this document saved so it's readily available on your computer when you get to this section on the registration filing. After selecting the upload icon, you will then be able to search on your computer to find the document to upload. Once the document is selected, you can name the file, select open, and the document will attach with the file name listed. Under Description of Agreement, you will be required to select either Anticipate the $5,000 threshold will be exceeded, Do not anticipate exceeding the $5,000 threshold, or Pro Bono Lobbying Contract Authorization. Under Reportable Compensation Expense Information, you will be required to select either Anticipate will exceed with reportable expenses only, or anticipate will exceed with reportable compensation and expenses. Then, under the client signatory, which is the designated responsible party section, you are required to enter the name of the chief administrative officer or responsible party that signed the contract written authorization or lobbying agreement form. It is required to enter their business title as well. Finally, to complete this step in the tab, you then are required to enter the contract duration and compensation. 
Select the Add button. Another mini screen will appear where you will select the contract start date and contract end date. Please keep in mind the application will not allow you to enter a start date two months in advance. Then select the Add button under Compensation. This is where you will input the compensation amount agreed upon in your lobbying contract and whether it will be paid on an hourly, daily, weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, quarterly, annually, one-time, or range basis. If the information provided needs to be changed, just select the edit icon to make the necessary change. I will show you that in the next screen. If pro bono lobbying contract authorization is selected, then there is no compensation amount required here. The option to add that information won't appear. Once all these fields are complete, select the Add button below in the mini screen box. Then select the Add button below in the Lobbying Agreement window to have this information added to the registration filing. If you need to edit this information, this is where you would select the pencil icon. This information will appear under the Lobbying Agreements section in the Agreement Information tab. It will list the contract name, description if they will or will not exceed, the client signatory, the duration, and the compensation amount. If there are other supporting documents or information, those can be uploaded here by selecting the Upload icon and following the same steps taken when uploading the lobbying agreement. The In-House Lobbyist tab. This tab is required to be completed. It is recommended to have all the in-house lobbyist names added to the public corporation profile before filing a registration. There is new information required for individual lobbyists. Their email, phone number, and effective date for when they will begin lobbying. However, you do have the option to add each person individually within the registration and their information will be carried over to your public corporation profile under the Individual Lobbyist tab. Let's go through how to add an individual lobbyist when their name has already been provided in the organization profile, and then how to add an individual lobbyist name within the registration. How to add an individual lobbyist when their name has already been provided in the public corporation profile, you would select Modify. Then, under My Lobbyists, select each individual lobbyist name that will be listed on this registration. Double-click on the name, and then that name will be added under Selected Lobbyists. How to add an individual lobbyist name within the registration. Select Add New Additional Lobbyist. Input their last name, first name, email address, business phone, and effective date for when they will begin to lobby. Then select Add. If this section was selected in error, then just select Manage Lobbyists to return to the previous screen. Once all individual lobbyist names are listed under the Selected Lobbyist section, select Save Changes. The individual lobbyist names will then be listed in the Individual Lobbyist tab on the registration. You will see their name, phone number, email address, and you will check this box if they are considered designated. If you accidentally add an individual lobbyist name, you can remove that name by selecting Modify, double-clicking on the name added, and then Save Changes. the Business Relationships tab. If you have a reportable business relationship to report, you can select Yes in the drop-down and either complete that filing here within the registration by selecting Create New RBR. If you accidentally selected, you can select Back to Original Filing to return to the registration. 
the registration automatically saves so the filing can always be retrieved. If there is no reportable business relationship, then you can select No. In the drop-down and move to the next tab. If you are unsure if you have a reportable business relationship to report, please contact the JCOPE Attorney of the Day for guidance. The Lobbying Subjects tab. The subjects on which you expect to lobby will be reported in this tab. This section is formally known as the Business Nature section on the registration. You may list one or multiple subjects here. However, one subject is required to be listed. For the full list to choose from in the search field, type the asterisk symbol. The list will then appear. Once the subject is selected, it will pre-populate below under Subjects. If a subject is accidentally selected, just click the X to remove. The Lobbying Activities tab. State and municipal focuses and parties are entered here. Under Types of Lobbying Communications that you are or anticipate conducting, you will need to select from the drop-down either direct lobbying, grassroots lobbying, or both. Then, under Add Lobbying Focus in the Type drop-down box, you can select one of the following choices below. The focus number can then be added after the type has been selected. If an individual bill number is being listed, you can enter in the field, then select Enter on your keyboard. If multiple bill numbers are being added for the same type, select Load Multiple, add all the bill numbers separated by a comma in the box, and then click Process. All the lobbying focuses will be added below. You will see the type, identifying number or description, if the number does not exist, and you can check if monitoring only. If a bill number was added in error, you can remove by selecting X. If you are unsure of a bill number, you can add a description by selecting Add Description if identifying number is unknown. and selecting Add. Each type of bill number added is listed collectively under All. However, for a more refined view, you can also separate out the list per type by selecting the Type tab. In this case, we can separate it out by State Bill, by selecting State Bill. After completing that portion of the tab, you can scroll down to Do you have parties lobbied to report? Select either yes or no. If no is selected, you have completed this part of the tab and can move on. However, if yes is selected, these fields are required to be complete. Under Add Party Lobbied or Expected to be Lobbied, in the Type drop-down box, where it says Government Body, you will need to select one of the choices below. If you are unsure of a specific name within the Senate Assembly or Executive Chamber, you can select Senate Assembly Executive. Once the type has been added, you can either enter the party or type an asterisk in the field for the complete list to choose from. Once selected, the information will appear below under Parties Lobbied or Expected to be Lobbied. In this case, since you do not know the specific person to list, it will say not known at this time. Any other choices will give you an extensive list to choose from.
Below it will give you the government body and the name. If a party lobbied was added in error, you can remove by selecting X. Finally, the attestation tab. After the entire filing has been complete, you are required to attest to the information provided by selecting the checkbox next to, I declare under penalty of perjury that the information contained in this filing is true, correct, and complete to the best of my knowledge and belief. The file or name and chief administrative officer name will pre-populate in the fields. The file or name is the name of the individual, the user profile of which the registration is being submitted. The chief administrative officer name is the name that's listed in the organization profile. The activity tab. This is auto-generated by the application to display for the filer the history of the filing if it has been saved at any point. Then, once the registration is complete, you can so select Submit, which is located above the tabs in the registration filing. Once submitted, the registration will be viewable on your dashboard and in the public corporation profile. There is no fee required for a public corporation registration. You can locate the submitted registration by selecting View next to the public corporation organization name under Affiliated Organizations. And you can see the submitted registration form by selecting Forms. If the filing needs to be amended, you can now amend even before the filing is approved. Multiple amendments can be filed. The application no longer stops a filing because there is currently one pending approval. To file an amendment, open the submitted registration and select Amend. Congratulations! You now know how to file the Public Corporation Statement of Registration in the new lobbying application. If there is an issue with your Public Corporation Statement of Registration, JCOPE staff will create a filing ticket and you will receive an email notification. Please note only JCOPE staff can create a ticket. There will be a notification on your dashboard of the pending ticket and you can resolve the issue by accessing the submitted filing and amending to correct. Thank you for watching this second video on how to file the Public Corporation Statement of Registration. It is important to know where to reach out for help. If you have questions regarding how to file the Public Corporation Statement of Registration in the new lobbying application, please contact Jacob's Help Desk at 887 Ethics. When prompted, press 1 to speak to a lobbying filing specialist or email the help desk at helpdesk at jcope.ny.gov. If you have any legal questions about reportable business relationships or any legal questions regarding the new lobbying regulations, please contact Jacob's Attorney of the Day at 887 Ethics. When prompted, press 2 to speak to the Attorney of the Day or send an email to legal at jacob.ny.gov.